morning everybody it's great to see you i'm so thankful that you have joined with us uh, to worship on our live stream online this morning and uh we are as was announced live streaming only it's but it is great to be together with you and even though i can't see you right now uh before worship before i got up i just uh noticed people coming on and families coming on uh from all over and we just want to say we are so glad that you are with us, so glad that you are worshiping with us this morning. And uh, this is really just an important message from God's Word because we are talking about an alternative to anxiety. And isn't that what we need right now? Uh, a, an antidote for anxiousness because anxiousness is, is running just rampant in our world today and it's also running rampant among many Christians that are just caught up in anxiety and anxiousness and discouragement and so we need more than anything to hear from God's Word um, about how we can move out of a spot of anxiousness to a peace that passes understanding how we can move from a place of depression despair and discouragement to the having the joy of the Lord fill our hearts. So I hope you've got your Bibles. I'd encourage you to take out a notepad and uh, write these verses down, thoughts that you have, because this is just so key. Let me lead us in prayer, and then we'll jump in uh, to the Word to, together today. Let's pray. Holy Father in heaven, thank you for a beautiful day, God. Um, thank you for everybody that is um, online with us now. Thank you for everybody that will be watching this message uh, later on, Father. What we need, what we are desperate for, is the peace that the, only the God of peace, which is you, Father, can provide. And so I pray, God, that you will bless uh, the reading of your word, the study of your word this morning, and may it uh, go, back, uh, go out, Father, and, and be fruitful for your glory, God. Give us a peace and give us a joy beyond measure. We pray, pray in Christ's holy name. Amen. So, um, obviously, cases are on the rise. Um, hospitals are filling up, uh, certainly in the Los Angeles area, which is why we've had this tightening of restrictions. ICU beds are filling up. And so we have this, this pandemic, we have this virus, and, and it is creating uh, significant anxiousness in so many people's lives. But there's actually this virus of anxiousness that I think I'm even more concerned about because it can do havoc in the spiritual growth and spiritual development of Christians' lives if we are just trapped, if we are paralyzed constantly by anxiety or discouragement or despair. And so we, we have... Uh, this morning, this antidote, there, there's good news for your life. You do not have to be trapped. You do not have to be stuck in a place of extreme anxiousness, regardless of the circumstances around. If Paul has taught us anything from prison, what he's taught us is the circumstances don't determine the joy that we have in the Lord or the anxiety, that, the peace that we can have from the anxieties of this world and so we come to chapter four and Paul is on his his final thoughts here and so it's like he's got some things he's been building up to share with us I think he's sharing to this church that he loves in in Philippi this uh, church that he has planted and I think they're wrestling that re wrestling with anxiety and so he's telling them look you don't have to be anxious about anything and you can rejoice in the Lord all of the time and so if you this morning are a person that wrestles with anxiety, I mean, we all do at times, or anxiousness or, or even despair. Uh, today, God, I just pray God speaks right to your heart. And, and, and what, what he tells us in, in Philippians 4, and I think it starts in verse 4, is Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice let your gentleness be evident to all, for God is near. 
Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, through prayer and petition, let your requests be made known to God. With thanksgiving in your heart, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And that, that peace is, it's just, I think that the Holy Spirit of God, when we pray out to God and we cry out to him with thanksgiving, which is the key of this whole series that we've been doing, right? Paul is rejoicing because Paul is always thankful. And so he says, you know, with thanksgiving in your heart, thankful hearts, we have to have hearts that are full of thanksgiving. And we'll talk about what we have to be thankful for in just a little bit. And God wants to guard your heart. He wants to guard your mind. He wants, he's a God of peace and he wants to give you that peace um, regardless of what's happening around you. One of my favorite movies that, that Becky and I saw, I know a lot of people love this movie, is called Princess Bride. Do you remember that movie, uh, Princess Bride? If you haven't seen it, I'd encourage you to see it. But, you know, Wesley is kind of the, the star and he's in love with, the, with uh, I think it's Buttercup, right? And uh, so he goes through all these challenges, really that are challenges that test his love. And, and I still still can have nightmares from some of these uh, things that he faced. But, you know, the, the thing that bothered me the most was uh, what I want to think about for just a moment. But this comment is made in the movie where um, it says, you survived the, sw- the fire swamp, so you must be brave. But no one withstands the machine. You know, you know what that machine is? You remember the, the name of the machine? It's the pit of despair, that's what they call it. And so there's this assistant, this wicked assistant to Count Rugen, who warns our hero Wesley in The Princess Bride. And in fact, uh, they've captured him now and uh, they soon find, he finds himself at the mercy of this torture device that's known as the pit of despair. And it's this infernally lurching contraption of wooden planks, sluice gates, whirling gears, and suction cups that gradually pull the force of life out of those who are strapped to it. And I can just remember the big such suction cups that, you know, are around his head. I think there might be one on top. And then, you know, he's laying on this, this table and he's strapped to it. And there's suction cups that, you know, are all around his heart. And... I say that because this is what anxiousness is like, but it's very real. Anxiousness is, it sucks the life right out of you, which is why God is trying to tell us, look, you don't have to, you don't have to just be stuck completely in a state of anxiety. There is a way out. There is an antidote that God wants to give you this morning. And we see it in this this verse. And so anxiousness is like this life-sucking machine. And there's already tons of anxiety. There's already people who are worrying. But what studies are showing now is that in the middle of this pandemic, that like anxiety and people who are taking depression pills and anxiety pills, that's up like 400%, and it was already high, but it's up 400% in the middle of this pandemic. So what are you anxious about? Just consider that for a moment. Just consider yourself and think about what are the things right now that are causing you the most anxiety? I know sometimes I, I don't worry as much about my health as I worry about the health of my family and my wife and my children. And, you know, I have anxiousness about the health of, you know, people when, when we're at church or the people who, are, who aren't even in church but are just, you know, a part of the Hilltop family. And so there's this anxiousness about their health and about their lives. There's a lot of anxiousness about our economy right now. And I know some people have lost their jobs and they're worried about their finances and they should be. And some people are, you know, concerned if they're going to lose their job. Others are concerned about, um, you know, family, finances, economy. What are the things that you think about that just keep you up at night, that, 
it's just hard to, to sleep because your mind is just racing and, and the anxiousness is there. Our son Zachary uh, teaches in college at um, Oklahoma State in Stillwater and they are they were still in person now I think as of this past week they're not but so every day I know he's going into the classroom I, I think he's been exposed at least four times from students that have been in his class that had COVID but didn't know that they have it our daughter Jessica is you know as many of you know is living in Madrid and she's far away and you know the, the cases in Madrid and the hospitals in Madrid and so wow it just it, it causes this, this fear, this, this constant angst, and it kind of drains us. And so, you know, what if in your life you, you could take this antidote and you could have that peace? I mean, how would that impact your, just your daily walk with the Lord or, or how you relate to your family or the people in the, in the workplace or the market if you weren't just constantly underlying carrying this tremendous amount of anxiety? The good news this morning is there truly is an antidote. It is God's peace that he wants to give you, and he is a God of peace. Now, this text is, is interesting to me because I was always told to kind of avoid superlatives. I think that's the word, you know, like always, never say never. Maybe you've heard that before. But, but Paul in this text here, he just uses superlatives all over the place, right? Rejoice in the Lord always. And I'm thinking now, now always rejoice in the Lord? What do you mean by that, Paul? Be anxious for nothing? Really? But in everything, right? Just one after the, the, the other. Um, and it's like, okay, how is this realistic? Because look, I know many of us, all of us at some level have this anxiousness that's in our mind and in our hearts. Does that mean we're bad people? No. Does that mean we're bad Christians because, you know, we, we struggle with discouragement sometimes? Of course not. Anxiousness is actually a part of God's design in a sense. Anxiousness is a good thing in many ways because it warns us and it helps us to navigate life in wise ways. And so um, I'm, I'm thinking of even Jesus was so anxious at times. I... I, I not, not all the time, but certainly sometimes he was very anxious. I was driving in this morning and I was on the freeway and, and I mean, I'm probably going, okay, I confess, I'm going 72 because people will run you over if you're going like 65, the speed limit. So I'm thinking, wow, I'm going 72 two miles an hour and people are just flying by me. I mean, they had to be going 100 miles an hour easily, I would think weaving in and out of traffic you know and they get right close to you now is it wrong to be anxious no i think there's some healthiness there right what does it cause me to do causes me to be more alert to be more aware to slow down to be more careful and so in some ways it can be a very healthy thing jesus in the garden was anxious and so let me just share a passage out of Luke, and it says this, talking about when Jesus was in the garden, it says, an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Wow. Now, is that this, this anguish? Is that this ang um anxiousness Jesus is face, facing. Verse 45 of Luke 22 says, when he arose from prayer, he went back to his disciples and he found them asleep and exhausted from sorrow. So we have sorrow, certainly, in this life. It's a God-given thing. And so is anxiousness. And Jesus certainly felt that as he's approaching his death. And, you know, what is it that caused such, such anguish for Jesus? We, we, we don't know exactly. Was he afraid to die? No, I, I think it was a part of his plan. Was he afraid how he was going to die, that he's being crucified? Perhaps. Was he anxious about knowing that he was going to take on the world's sin? He was going to take on your sin, yet he had no sin. 
no deception, no fault. He, he walked this life, the only one to walk this life with complete perfection. And yet he knows on that cross, he is going to be taking on sin. We don't know, but we do know he wrestled with the gar- in this garden, but he prayed to God, he trusted his father, and he said, let your will be done. And we know how the story goes, right? That God, he loves, he, he's a master at taking your sorrow and turning it into joy. He specializes, he's an, an expert in taking your anxiousness, your anxious heart and your anxious mind and moving you to a place of a peace that passes understanding. That's what his word is telling us here. And I also believe that you can have a deep sorrow and joy at the same time. I believe you can have anxiousness in your heart, but that God will move you to a place of complete peace. But it's a journey, isn't it? It's kind of up and down, and I think it is for all of this. And so Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. If you didn't hear it, he says again, I say, rejoice. He says, let your gentleness be evident to all people because the Lord is near. So if you are discouraged, if you are down, and in those moments that you are discouraged, you need to know God is right there with you. The Lord is near. And what we need to do, what you need to do in those moments is you need to reach out to the Father. You need to reach out to God, pray to God, trust Him. He is always near you. You know this, right? In the good, in the bad, in the challenges. And we're so quick to try to, you know, get ourselves out of discouragement and despair. But what Paul wants us to understand as he's writing from prison, as he is on death row, as he is in chains for the gospel, he's an expert at this, by the way, at knowing and learning how to have joy and contentment in all circumstances. I see him as an authority figure because of what not only is the apostle, but what he's actually going through when he writes these words, rejoice in the Lord always, be anxious for nothing. And so there is this antidote for anxiousness. Here it is, prayer, petition, with thanksgiving in your heart. When you feel anxiousness, you need to trust God and go to God in prayer Bring your petitions, your requests before him, but do that with thankfulness in your heart. Now, I've always known this, one of my favorite passages, but I realized something much fuller as I studied this out over the past couple of weeks. When it says to be thankful, what are the things that you are thankful for? It's like, what, what do I, th- as we move into Thanksgiving this week, what are the things you're most thankful for? And, and what I hear and what I, I think at times is I'm most thankful for my family because I just love my family so much. I'm thankful for the church. I'm thankful, you know, for my health. I'm thankful I got a roof over my head. I'm thankful for my daily bread, which Jesus says to be thankful for. But I think for God to bring that peace that passes understanding, he wants us, listen, this is key. He wants us to start by being thankful for what we have in Christ Jesus. Because church, what we have in Christ Jesus, nothing in this world can take away. No circumstances, no pandemic, no problems, no challenge that that we are facing can take away from what we have in Christ Jesus. So what I did, I just went back just in Philippians and I came up with this short list from the Apostle Paul of when he says, be thankful, what are the things that Paul is thankful for? Of course, family, of course, food, but remember, he's in jail at this time. And so, in, in before I get to this list, the, the, all those things I listed, family, um, food, housing, cars, jobs, all of those can be, disappear in this life. So if we are counting on our thankfulness just for those things, we are going to be disappointed because there are no guarantees this side of heaven for those things. But there are guarantees for what we have in Jesus. So listen to some of the things in Paul's Paul's list. If you want this peace that passes understanding, you must learn to be thankful 
for what you have in Jesus Christ. And so Paul's Thanksgiving list, and I, I know this is short, I didn't capture it all, but he talks about, I am thankful. He just starts thanksgiving for God's holy people. Did you catch that? God's holy people. Boy, if you talk about something to be thankful for, it is that you are completely holy, and we are the holy chosen people of God because of the blood of Jesus Christ. He's thankful for that. He's thankful for this. He's thankful for God's grace. What's God's grace? Just this, it's described as this undeserved favor, this undeserved merit. Aren't you thankful that God is a gracious God, that his mercies are new every morning? And as long as you are breathing, nothing's going to take that away. He's thankful for the church, which is striking to me. He just starts out this letter, how thankful he is for the assembly, the gathering of the saints, the ecclesia, the church, the community of God. He is so thankful for that, even though he can't be with the community. Remember, he's in chains right now. He is isolated. His only company is, is that of the guards, and I'm sure he's praying for them, knowing Paul, and he's thankful that they're letting him write this letter and perhaps somehow helping him get this letter out. He's thankful for the love of God, the righteousness in Christ Jesus. Christ, he's thankful that Christ is still preached even though he is in chains. And I, I'm thankful that Christ is preached, that God is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, his promise to return, but is patient not willing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. So I am thankful that Christ is still being preached as long as we are alive. I am thankful for the Hilltop Church. I am so thankful for each and every one of you. We have such a, a wonderful family. God is moving in powerful ways at Hilltop. I don't know if you know this. We have had 12 baptisms during COVID. This, this little church in El Segundo, 12 baptisms, people that have given their life and their faith and their heart to Jesus Christ and taken that step. I'm so thankful. I'm, I'm thankful for this community. This is what Paul is talking about. He's thankful for the surpassing worth, that's value statement, of knowing Christ Jesus. He's thankful for the resurrection from the dead, for his citizenship in heaven. He's thankful that he's saved. He's thankful for the joy of the Lord. He's thankful for the peace of God that passes all understanding. Wow, listen. If you want to experience that peace that passes understanding, then start your prayer with what you are thankful for in Christ Jesus and remind your heart of what you have because of the love of God in Jesus. Because everything in this life is temporary. Everything, it's a mist, it's a vapor. I lost a good friend this past week to COVID. Stephen Kay, some of you may know him. He's been a longtime minister in the Churches of Christ in Southern California. And we've gathered many times at minister meetings and Stephen and I um, did some work together helping some churches over this past year. On Tuesday, he was diagnosed with COVID last week. On Wednesday, he was put in the ER. On Thursday, I texted with him in the morning on Friday, he went to be with Jesus. Man, that, that was fast. And we need to pray for, of course, his family, his, his wife, Debbie, and his children, because um, I know, you know, we, words can't describe. But, but the thing about Stephen is, not only was he a minister in the churches of Christ, but S Stephen and Debbie had lost a child early on. Uh, years ago, they had lost a young child. And um, he, knew, he knows what loss is. And so he dedicated so much of his life to being a chaplain um, for the fire department and helping people who were grieving and helping people who were dealing with loss and letting them know that there's a God that loves them. And so he knows and counseled so many people that were going through what we would consider just the roughest of circumstances. And we know where his heart is, we know where his faith is, we know where Stephen is now. And all of those things that I just listed that are in Jesus Christ, he knows nothing could take 
that away from him while he was in this, this world and certainly even for eternity because all those things we're talking about are into eternity. And so all these things we're anxious about in this world, you know, are so temporary. So I'm thankful that Stephen knew Philippians well because he knew his Bible. I'm thankful that he knew what Paul meant when Paul said to live is Christ, to die even better. And now he's enjoying that even better. He knows what it means to rejoice in the Lord. And that's the key, right? Rejoice in the Lord. Bring your petitions before the God of peace. He understood this. He understood what it means to be anxious for nothing in Christ Jesus. And I'm thankful for his life, for his influence. And I put together a little thankful list just of things that Stephen knows. I'm thankful I, that I know he's in heaven right now. I'm thankful that he is free. I'm thankful that he is breathing the heavenly air freely and is no longer on a ventilator. I know he has a home with Jesus that Jesus has been preparing just for him. I know he has been made perfect, and I know he's with his daughter, Kristen, and so many others that went on to heaven before him. To live is Christ, to die is gain. And so I am thankful for what he's experiencing today, even though we will miss him. And he was such a servant of the Lord. What if we were to take on this perspective that God is calling us to? What if we were to bring our requests before the Lord, but after we thank him for what we have in Christ? If we pray, if we petition with thankful hearts, God is faithful and he promises that he will give you a peace that is unimaginable, a peace that is undescribable, a peace that passes understanding. And so what if you were allowed that peace to reign in your heart? See, anxiety is normal, we all face it, but the problem is, is if we allow anxiety to reign in our hearts, if we allow it to paralyze us, this anxiousness that we have. And so yes, we can be anxious, but Paul, the Lord is saying in his word, you've got to move on. And the way you move on from that is to pray to the Father, petition him, bring your requests with thanksgiving in your heart. Listen to what 1 Thessalonians says, chapter 5, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. You can write this down if you like. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Jesus. In Christ Jesus. That's the key. Are you in Christ Jesus? What does it mean to be in Christ Jesus? Well, Romans tells us that when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, the, the Romans 6 says you are baptized into Jesus Christ. As so many people have at Hilltop this past year. So I want to encourage you this morning that the peace that passes understanding is only found in Christ Jesus. The joy of the Lord to where you can rejoice always is only found in Christ Jesus. Will you give him your heart today? Will you trust him? Will you put your trust in Jesus to bring you this unimaginable peace? If you haven't already, will you take this, this so important step of baptism and being buried in baptism, washing your sins away. I want to encourage you this morning to do that. Before we close, let me just remind you that God specializes in turning your mourning into dancing, your sorrow into joy, your anxiousness into peace. He wants it to do, to do that for you today. But here's some things that you can do. And I'll encourage you to write these down. Remember these. First of all, before you ask God, thank God. I think that's what he's saying. Before you just get out your petition and do all these things for me, God, will you thank him and make sure you thank him 
for what you have in Jesus Christ. And I want to encourage you to start that list today, immediately. Don't forget about this. Don't pause. When we're done with church, as you're eating or whatever you're going to do right after church, get out a pad and paper and, or your computer, your phone, whatever, and just write down for what you are thankful for in Christ Jesus and carry that with you. And the next time you start to feel anxiousness in your mind or anxiousness in your heart, take out that list and just remind yourself of what you have in Christ Jesus. I'll encourage you to do that. Start your prayer with thanksgiving, then bring your petitions to the Lord. Remember that it's a journey. Sometimes it just doesn't happen right away. God may want us to work through some things or to learn some things, but eventually he's gonna give you that peace. I want that, I know you want that. More than anything, God wants that for your life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything through prayer and petition with thanksgiving in your heart. Let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and guard your mind in Christ Jesus. May you be thankful this week. Happy Thanksgiving. Experience the peace and the joy of the Lord as you trust in Him. God bless you, everybody. Thanks for being here.